in your opinion, which is it? Yeah, you know, Kevin, I think it's a blend, quite honestly. The analytics say one thing, but in this day and age, the way the game is played, big centers are typically challenged from a mobility standpoint, especially trying to defend fleet-footed perimeter guys in pick-and-roll situations and in space. To Vucevic's credit, he's worked hard at becoming better, trying to be a better rim protector and recognize where he needs to be early on with anticipation. So he's making progress, but it's a blend in my mind. season he put up about 13 points a game last season four rebounds and two assists the contributions he's been making on the floor have been a boom for this team great stretch of games for him yeah you know they've given him more responsibility and he's responded and the way he's going i think his role is only going to increase took the opportunity when he's here and is very dependable at serving his teammates on the court so he's like a natural leader Here's Fultz, then when he covered. And it's out of bounds, nice touch by right him. Fournier dishes the Fultz. Just five to shoot. Here's Vucevic. Man, big, big hands, explosive, really good athlete. He's got all the tools and an upside without limits. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That one drops. He ties it up. You were talking, Clark, about Allen's length and leaping ability. He's dangerous around the rim. Boy, he sure is, guys. Still developing his skill game, but he's already more than serviceable at the offensive end of the floor. And we know he's a rim protector defensively. Good feet, gets up and down, has a nice touch and good hands. Boy, this guy's going to be some kind of player going forward. Now, here's Fultz. 14 points from him, the last game against Chicago. Boy, he was piling up those assists in that one. I mean, every pass seemed to be on time and on target. Fournier against LeVert. And it's set back by Allen. It's really hard to shoot over Allen, which is probably why you shouldn't try to do it. Friends outside. shot and the layup is up and in. Prince has got his second basket of the night. Boy, that was a sweet looking teardrop. There's very little defense for that. Fultz with the ball. No points in the game yet for him. Off the run and foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And the number one pick in 2017, Markel Fultz of Washington. Six foot four. Clark, do you think he's more of a point guard or a two? Well, you know, in Washington, Kevin, I thought he showed the ability to score and assist at a high level. Coming out of college, I thought he had a chance to be really dynamic in both areas. Time will tell if that's the case. But I think playing the point could take some of the pressure off of his shot as he regains confidence in that part of his game. First one falls for him. Clark, there's nothing like opening night. Preseason in the rearview mirror. Now the games count for real. Terrific time. Yeah, exciting for everybody because hope springs eternal for all teams in the league after you get beyond preseason. And the games do count. They start calculating and documenting W's and M's. And good on the second, so he makes them both. 
and you look out there at the Magic, one of the taller teams in our league. You know, that's a philosophical bit for the front office. They want long athletic players, draft guys with great length, and then develop their strength and skill level. And I actually kind of like that approach. Have the philosophy, stick to it, and be true to it. Offensive rebound. Here's Harlan. 18 that time for Vucevic. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And you know, guys, I love his fight and grit on the interior. I mean, he never lets a shot go uncontested. Now here is Harris. Following the miss by Evan Fournier. Pass to Prince. Down low. Here's Allen. And it's Allen slamming it down. You know, because Allen is so quick with his feet getting out of setting the screen, it makes him hard to guard in the pick and rolls. Levert against Fournier.
they're making some really nice passes out there. Excellent passing. That could set the tone for the rest of the game. And it also, it's been a positive to watch that they've attacked the defensively as well. It's really a bit about the balance that they've shown. Well, you look at Isaac, and all you think he needs to do is add some weight. He's got terrific skills and a promising future. Ross has checked in for the Magic. Michael Carter-Williams comes in for Fultz. So we get some both. And Clark, when you think back to your playing days in high school, what memories come to mind? Well, just the fun of being able to have success all four years I was at St. Joseph High School in Cleveland, the way the city rallied around us on uh, my senior year when we had a chance to play for state championship. And fortunately, we came up short. The teammates, the coaches, and teachers that I had a chance to enjoy those four years were all uh, really fond, special memories for me. Here's Augustine following the three quarter by Brooklyn. Feeds it to Ross. The basket is good, the assist from Augustine. Augustine's got his third assist on the night. For the Nets, they come into this one following the loss to the Warriors. Tinwitty drives it, and the call on the shot sends him to the line. And at 6'6", six, six, Spencer Tinwitty's tall for a point guard, but Clark, despite his size, very slippery off the dribble. Yeah, he's ill-like when you talk about him off the dribble, guys. I mean, excellent change of pace. He's got a quick first step. And once he gets in the lane, his size helps him be a good finisher. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. And the 6'6 point guard, Spencer Dinwiddie. Second round pick of the Detroit Pistons in 2014. You know, Greg, they might have wished they held on to him. One of the most improved players in our league. Last season, he signed that four-year, $48 million extension from the Nets, rewarding his growth. And both free throws good for Dinwiddie. You know, the next step for Dinwiddie is to just become more consistent going forward, especially when it comes to scoring, because I think he does everything else pretty well. Augustine Noah. They've been sensational on the backfield to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. Here's Temple. Back to Dinwiddie. Bamba with the block. Guys, that's all athleticism and timing. Bamba, a terrific shot blocker because he uses the physical tools he has quite well. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. T.J. Augustine picks one up. The Nets have looked good at the line today. They're perfect in four attempts. Two shots. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. And a great track record in the draft for the Nets. Karis LeVert selected with the 20th pick, and Jared Allen taken at 22. And you might want to throw in, guys, too, Rodion's Kuruks, the 40th pick in 2018, had a big impact, even participated in the Rising Stars Challenge. And, you know, sometimes you've got to make your own breaks, make your own good fortune, and that's exactly what the Nets have done. He is zero for his last however many this quarter, guys. Might need to get him out and let him settle down a bit here. Here's Temple. No good on the shot. And Orlando will come the other way. And it's in there. Temple's got five. 35 seconds left to play here in the first. Here's Augustine. Sweet little forward. Tricky and crafty inside. Augustine has a unique ability to get tough shots over the defense. Augustine against Dinwiddie.
if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter of action so far. And uh, from Brooklyn, guys, what jumps out to you, step wise? Just stretching out the floor that first. Uh, they had the defense scrambling. And you know what? That's what happens when you establish your three point game early. Puts the defense right up against them. The Magic trail by five. We've got Wilson Chandler. Garrett Temple is out there with Spencer Dinwiddie. Then there's DeAndre Jordan. And it's Claxton in the four spot. So that's the Nets five. Offensive rebound. Bomba dishes to Ross. Hunter Williams feeling it out a bit. Clock at four. Here's Augustine. The rebound by the Nets. And pulled out all the stops to fight his way inside, but the D just was not giving in. With the Claxton's got the lead up to seven out for the Nets. Just a late reaction there from the defense, and he is always going to finish that one. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, for Nick Vucevic, there was some great first last season. His son Philip was born in December. And then Dad made his first All-Star appearance. Nick is from a basketball family. He said, I'll enjoy telling my son the stories, like my dad did with me. We'll see if he likes the game of basketball. I think he will. Kevin? The A is certainly in his gene. Thanks for that report. Shooting foul. As the whistle blows, he'll shoot two free throws. And this spot has always been Jordan's biggest drawback. He's never been able to make his free throws at, at even a modest rate. And teams are never afraid to put him on the line. And he makes it first. The level of nuance and the footwork that keeps evolving every few years. Talk about the changes that you have seen from the time you've played to the exquisite footwork we see now. Well, you know, some of my peers would say that these guys are being allowed to walk. They yes. haven't <laughs> talked about his good footwork. So you work with Reggie and other guys, and I hear them all the time saying guys are getting away with carrying the ball and so forth. But the footwork is pretty good. I mean, when you think about it, the step-back three-point shot, the ability to make plays off the dribble, all the tribute to footwork. I think it's just an evolution of the game as players see more and more of excellent work on the court. Just such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. And the six, seven, three man, Terrence Ross, the number eight pick out of Washington. Well, you know, the shooting and leaping ability of Ross, phenomenal. I mean, I think the defensive end is where he can solidify his game and really improve. Um, he's got all the tools, though, to be an excellent two-way player. Lynette's making a switch here. LaVert's checked in. Evan Fournier is checked in for Orlando. That's leading by three. Something you expect from a seven footer like Vucevic. Looking at the last game for Orlando, it was a loss to Chicago. Pass to Levert. Passes to Claxton. Shot clock at three. Here's Dinwiddie. And again, it's the Nets missing. The Magic have gone three of their first five shots to drop here in the second quarter. Jordan against Carter Williams. In the corner, Bobo with it. That doesn't go in. Had a chance, though, to take the lead. That game has been very close in a lot of areas, but rebounding has been the one differentiator thus far. Hey, Greg. 
Greg, we've seen it time and time again in games. Effort and determination on the glass can make up for a lot of other weaknesses. And guys, they continue to put a lot of pressure on the interior defenders with their work down low. Then Whitting's remain the floor. To the paint, it's stolen by Vucevic. And here we go, fast break. Carter Williams has got the ball. And that one, good. Now it's a three-point magic lead. And after that ragged first quarter, they're getting some momentum, some confidence. Nice one. Yeah, and, you know, the game of basketball, as you well know, Greg, and guys, is a game of runs. So their offense is starting to move in a positive direction now. Nice upswing here. Ross, that's good. Man, I like the three-point stroke of Ross. Gets it off so effortlessly. Man, he's got terrific form. Now a timeout called by Brooklyn. Man, they just can't seem to get going offensively. And I think this timeout, guys, is where you draw up some plays that are guaranteed to create some high-percentage shots. Sacramento to take on the Kings. On offense, here are the Magic. I'm facing them right now in a 15-2 run. Carter Williams kicks to Fournier. Shot from 12. And no good that time. Jordan with some nice deep. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. That's to Prince. to Jordan. Over Ross. Up it goes, and the magic lead is cut down now to just four points with the basket from Jordan. Jordan, very efficient in the paint because of his lip. Close to the bucket, he's hard to deal with. Now, here's Fournier, and that's collected by DeAndre Jordan. Jordan's got rebound number seven for him tonight, and the shot comes in. Obviously, a mix-up defensively on that possession. Williams kicks to Fournier. Here's Vucevic. Great D that time from Jordan. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And you know, guys, I love his fight and grit on the interior. I mean, he never lets a shot go uncontested. Well, they'll be happy with that look, even though it didn't fall. You know what? That's a confidence shaker for him, though. I mean, that's a shot he expects to make every time. who brings up the ball for the Brooklyn Nets and contact on the shot so he'll be shooting free throws here. It's going to be on Michael Carter Williams. Him when he's so good at figuring out ways to get the defense to foul him, you just can't be careless defensively when you're guarding Dinwiddie. the roster, what would be your preference as a general manager? The direction you might want to go? Well, obviously, if you have an opportunity to get an outstanding franchise-type point guard or versatile wing player in today's game, I think those are the pieces that you really need to start. 
because there's so much spacing and, and so much switching on defense. Exactly, and I failed to mention a two-way player at that wing spot right. who can defend multiple positions but also have a pretty strong offensive skill set. And you talk about the best defensive head coaches in the league. Steve Clifford has to be on that short list. I would agree with you, partner. I mean, his teams play hard, they play smart, they play with discipline. And that usually is a reflection of the coach and a good one. of his scoring ability. And Brooklyn making a change here. Allen's checked in. And so Fournier nails both of them. And they have yet to miss a shot from the line here this quarter. Yeah, you have to make teams pay for fouling. That's why they call them free. And they've done exactly that. Made them pay. Now here's Jordan. His last outing, he had eight points. Nikola Vucevic is going to pick up the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. Prince, the pass to Jordan. Harris inside. He's guarded by Ross. Just four to shoot. They get a hand on it. It's out of bounds. Brooklyn will retain possession. Taking a look here at the numbers for Allen. A very nice season for him last year. Eighth in field goal percentage and a top 15 ranking in blocks per game. Supplying that back line protection that is so key to a great defense. And you know, back to his tremendous efficiency shooting last season. Top 10 in the league. His dead eye shooting creates so many opportunities for that offense. Now, here's Fournier. He has six. Pass to Gordon. And he banks in the lane. Gordon's got his first basket of the night. Gordon is one of those guys who loves physical contact. He's really skilled at finishing over difficult defense. Passes it to Jordan. Dishes it to Prince. And the Nets miss again. Magic leading by five. Here's Fournier getting its contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. And the foul goes against Brooklyn. I'd like to see Fournier drawing contact on his shots. I mean, he's a crafty player who gives defenses a lot of problems. And a closer look here at the hustle stats for the Magic. Well, you have to admire their intensity in the paint defensively. I mean, really contesting and even blocking shots. Definitely a factor early. And also, how about the fact defensively they're getting that backboard and getting out in transition, especially in this first half. The first free throw is good. Situations, guys. 
basketball IQ and pick and rolls to a single. Here's against Fournier. Got a piece of it. Stolen by Allen. Oh, and a best break for the Nets. And that's how you do it. all-star game in 2019. Nikola Vucevic just stayed with it. Continued to get better. Looking at who's out there now for the Nets. Chandler comes in for DeAndre Jordan. And Garrett Temple subbed in for Karis LeVert. That one is no good. Isaac passes to Augustine. In the corner. Bamba with it. Now Isaac. Orlando needs to get off a shot over Allen. And three chances on that possession, but they just couldn't find a way to score. Chandler dishes to Temple. There's 31 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Prince with it, out guarded by Fultz. And it's Orlando with the rebound. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Following this one, they get to host the Hornets. That game is the first and last of their home season. Augustine, no luck. Hey, how about imagining if they were hitting their shots, how big the lead could be? And so far, that's not been the case. Chandler takes the Prince. And he's good on the three ball. Prince has got 19 points. A dependable passer. Chandler doesn't necessarily score. I mean, he's also good at finding his open team. He got more NBA basketball. second half action for you thus far a pretty evenly contested game you have to like what we're seeing from Torian Prince and how about the amount he's contributing in the scoring column 
through two quarters, he has been terrific. And you know what? They've come at him a few different ways defensively, and nothing has slowed him down. And we're halfway through this one. Plenty of basketball left in a game that's been fairly even so far. Tipping off the second half here, Steve Clifford's five. At the four and the five, we have Gordon and Vucevic. Arkell folds out there with Evan Fournier, and it's Isaac into the three spot. Now, here's Fournier, and it's set by Allen. For the time, the top man, the foul, a powerhouse move, and he's got a chance for one more at the line. It's on Markel Fultz. Not to be denied there. Allen playing hard, little contact, not going to bother. This is his second trip to the line in this one. just against his constitution. Here now is Dinwiddie. And it's outside. Rubber inside the line. And again, no good by Brooklyn. It's Fournier on the wing. Lover defending. Stolen by the first. Improve upon. Carter Williams, he's checked in for Orlando. Free throw, good. Allen. Clock keeps going. Three minutes into the second half now. Dinwiddie against Carter Williams. Here's Isaac, and the layup's good off the glass. Seven points in the game. Man, I admire how Isaac fights through the contact there, man. Grit and grind on display. Not letting the defense time down on these shots. Now, here's Dinwiddie. He has six, and Michael Carter-Williams hits the whistle that time. That's foul number two for him. <laughs> Just under three and a half minutes played here in the third quarter. against Dinwiddie. Passes it to Harris. On the arc. That one falls. Dinwiddie's feet. Here 
Harris has got his first three points of the game. Really good to see Harris playing with that kind of confidence because, you know, these shots will only help him get better. And that setback by Allen. I wonder what the score would be if they weren't controlling the backboard. And Greg, it's clearly been their edge. And in a close game like this, you look for every edge you can find. Yeah, but I mean, maybe could have tried for a more memorable dunk than that one. And we know he's capable of those memorable ones. Hey, they got a nice, comfortable lead here, fellas. Might as well keep it simple. Doing a plain, simple one-handed, just like Powell gave Cornier's shot is off. And here's Brooklyn. They're on a 13-4 run right now. It's Allen on the win. Passed it in, Witty. Bucket six. Back to Allen. And that will be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That one on Vucevic. And you know, when Allen gets this positioning, the defense is in trouble, which in turn forces them to commit the foul. And let's quickly check out the scoring breakdown here for the Nets. They keep piling up the assists, and they haven't cooled off at all. It's been a hot shooting night for them, too. I mean, they've hit a lot of those mid-range jump shots. The first one falls, and the Magic make a change here. On base checked in. So he's able to get one of two. And you remember when Aaron Gordon came into the league, Clark, some questioned whether he had the size to play the power forward position. Uh, not anymore. Yeah, you take a look at what's important at that position. It's about mobility, versatility, and skill set. And he certainly fits the bill nicely there. He can defend the three or even some four positions and brings a lot of energy at both ends. They can use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. They get it back. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Tell you what, that remarkable foot speed of Gordon's really causes problems for the defense. He's a hard guy to keep in front of. Now in his sixth season in the NBA, hard to believe Aaron Gordon is still just 24 years of age. Not much older than some rookies coming in. You wonder what his ceiling will be. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he keeps it the first one. Gordon is a high motor player who gives great effort out there all the time. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for the Nets. Chandler comes in for Karis LeVert. And a switcher also for Orlando. Augustine's checked in. Good on the second free throw. Nets leading by five. Now, Dimity, he's got six. He dishes it to Harris. And Bamba pulls it down. Here's Augustine bringing it up now for the Orlando Magic. To the middle. Here's Gordon. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Now when you look at Bamba with his size around seven one and eight clock, the longest wingspan, arm span ever measured at the combine, he can dominate inside. And you know what, guys? The scary thing is... He's got room to fill out. He's got room to add good muscle and weight to that frame. And once he does, Take he's going to be Take a break. nightmare to deal with. Up. Everything <laughs> open. Here Temple is checked in for Harris. And a switcher also for Orlando. Boss is checked in. Four. Inside, Temple. Rebound by the Magic. Bomber's got rebound number five here tonight. Hunter Williams.
Hines dishes to Bamba. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It goes on Spencer and Whitting. Yeah, you can see Bamba's composure down there. I mean, even when he's under pressure, he stays aggressive and calm. And good, and it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. And 
it's now only a one-point magic lead. Augustine against Dinwid. And Augustine kicks to Bumble. Back to Augustine. Down to five on the shot clock. Ross, the three. Dead shot, off. And Brooklyn will not get away with it. After hitting one three in the first half, he's been unable to dial in from deep since then. Dinwid, he passes to Claxton. Chandler scanning the floor for the lead, and Bamba pulls it down. Bamba's got seven rebounds in the game. This is it to Ross. Bamba with it to the paint. And here's Augustine. No good with the lane. 35 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Tinway passes to Claxton. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead there. And the activity he shows around the rim is why he is such a respected defender. And you know what? He's not going to give up an easy finish at the rim. I mean, that's just uh, against his constitution. Augustine against Dinwiddie. to six run and do not go away as we'll be back in just a few moments with the start of our fourth quarter coming up next well this has been a great contest so far and i imagine the fourth quarter could have even more action in store for us on the perimeter harris and prince Allen is out there with wilson chandler and it's Dinwiddie in at the point guard position. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Now here's Prince. Shot from 12. Vucevic with the rebound. Vucevic has got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. And Fournier kicks to Augustine. Here's Fultz. Alba trying to break free. And the shot goes in from Fultz. And the Magic lead by five. And it's Dinwiddie with the ball, bringing it up now for the Brooklyn Nets. Chandler finds Allen. Dinwiddie left side. And he converts the left. Oh, props to Dinwiddie there. I mean, Spencer, the closer he gets to the rim, the more dangerous he is. Here's Augustine shooting foul. And if the whistle blows, he'll shoot two free throws. Let's look at the energy steps, how the whistle game has been going for the Magic. Contested shots and block shots. They're bread and butter defensively. They're giving up no easy looks. Yeah, but also, they, they break, haven't missed a beat in terms of their fast break game. That's been equally as effective all night long. First free throw is good. You know, the speedy Augustine is really an excellent teammate and a dependable role player, a veteran presence who can really stroke it. Kyrus LeVert checked in for the Nets, and the Magic making a change here as well. Jonathan Isaac, he's checked in for Muhammad Bamba. That one misses. Oh, he did enough there. He made it a two-possession game. And those plays can make a difference in a game like this. <laughs> Well, you know it's going to fire up, Greg, everybody on that bench. Making a statement for sure. I mean, we'll see if they can maintain that aggressive approach, guys. And Fournier kicks to Augustine. And oh, boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's on Jared Allen. You know, Augustine, when he's attacking, playing downhill, trying to score, puts a lot of pressure on the defense and puts them in a tough spot guarding
second, so he hits one and two. Next trail by three. To the middle. Here's LeVert. Takes the assist and lays it in. Picked out the pass nicely. What a tough make that was by LeVert. Refused to be denied and great concentration. Outside Fournier. Checks up a three. It's hauled in by Harris. Brooklyn's going to the three corner 11 times tonight. And he'll find them. Pass to Allen. Levert kicks to Prince. A drummer Fournier. Allen and one for This has clearly been his half, and he's getting to a spot, shooting the ball with confidence. Excellent turnaround for him. Free throw, no good. And you look at Karis Levert, Clark out of Michigan, six foot seven, and a tremendous athlete. Kevin, he's one of my favorite players over the last handful of years coming out of college. He had some injury issues his last two seasons at Michigan, but he's an excellent two-way player. Outstanding energy and aggressiveness, and makes all kinds of plays at both ends of the floor and plays the game the right way. And he's good on the second. You know, Karis LeVert had a few surgeries before entering the NBA, but took kind of a unique step in writing an open letter to NBA GMs telling them physically he'd be ready for the league. And you know what? He was right. Now here's Gordon. The basket good off the assist from Pulse. I love how he establishes his post position inside before he comes. Just to Harris. Pass to LeVert. Just five on the clock. For a three. Rebound by the Magic. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. And another miss. Oof. 
He's having a really ugly game. Yeah, but about as ugly as you can have, you're right. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Yep, the next one puts them on the line, so they've got to be careful the rest of the way. Bamba kicks to Fultz. Back to Bamba. Shot clock at six. Shoots from 14. Doesn't go that time. And Brooklyn will come the other way. Prince, the pass to Dinwiddie. Not going to go that time. Magic leading by five. Here's Fultz. Yes, it is. Or that is a bucket. Number five on a five for 11 night. Man, this guy's deceptively strong inside. Markel Fultz. Not messing around. He doesn't care who's in front of him. Timeout called the Nets. Nice game. Great performance by Evan Fournier. Yeah, he's just torching them right now. A good decision to huddle up, kind of hit the reset button, and figure out how to slow his roll. transition. He said they've given up way too many fast break points, and he said we have to slow the pace of the game down and force them into taking some tough shots. Kevin? And since halftime, he has just been ice cold. Just can't seem to get anything to go his way. And thus far, they've managed to overcome an off game. And the basket by Harris. So knocking down the three guys. He's one of the premier three-point gunners in the NBA, Joe Harris. Outside Fournier. A three. It's hauled in by Harris. Harris has got four rebounds in this game. Dinwiddie passes to Levert. And it's Jonathan Isaac with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And so it's Brooklyn with it. Trailing by four. Tinwitty drives in. And Bimbo with the block. And since halftime, he just doesn't have a clue when it comes to shooting. And there have been some terrible shot choices here, Kev. That's not a good look at all. Not loose. Harris gets to Dinwiddie. Passes to Levert. Four on the shot clock. Oh, he blocked it in the flex off the backboard. On pass to Gordon. Now, here is Levert. Defense is right there. And the wow, as he could switch at halftime. Much more effective here in the second half. Pass to Gordon. And Gordon with the jump. Look at Gordon. Nice through that defense. Getting ahead of steam on his way to the basket and flushing that dunk home. And here we go. Fast break. Fultz has got it. Quick shot there, and it's off target. Now, Levert. Prince outside to the paint. Here's Harris. 
Takes it off the glass. Harris has got five points now this quarter. He didn't have a single point in the first half. Bagel, zero points, nada. He's starting to get into the groove here in the second. Gordon with it. Defended by Dinwiddie. And the basket by Gordon. You know, he was a non-factor in that first half, but now he's making up for lost time. Here's Levert. Now, here's Dinwiddie. It's stolen by Fultz. Outside Fournier. Off target from outside. Next trail by four. And here's Levert. Prince outside. Off target with his three. You know, the ill-advised threes isn't how you want to close the gap. They've got to have better shot selection. The pass to Gordon. Shoots over Dinwiddie. And it's Gordon missing. Brooklyn's got the three-point bug tonight. They've taken 15 shots outside the arc. Six of 15. Fournier against Levert. Suffocating reach of Isaac is tough to overcome. And out shoot, excels at getting up and demanding shots. Guys are looking for a way to score here. And they've had a tough time taking a win. There's a bird in that one. Good. Man, I like the competitive spirit of the heart. Never back down. He's enormous. to corral that many boards in one night. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. So the first one drops, and that puts them up by five. Levert with it. And the 
and yet miss again. And he missed that one, but I've seen him drill shots from that distance in warm-up. Well, that looked to me, guys, like a heat check and was maybe a step out of his range. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. the first one and that increases their lead to six. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a seven point game. From has the arc. That shot, no good.